Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is May 26th and I'm starting a new batch of episodes. Uh, that means I've got to sort of figure out what's going on. I'm pretty sure that when we left off, what, uh, what we just finished doing was getting uh, this text field to work um, in that it would format itself properly when, uh, with colors and so forth in real time rather than waiting for the tab away. I'm, I'm actually really happy with the way this has worked out from a functional perspective and I'm pretty happy with the way the code was written too I think. Um, that's a little self-serving but uh, I think it looks pretty good actually. Uh, I, I always love eliminating duplication and the fact that we were able to go in not only to dollars text field but to whatever that other class was that was doing the text change listener stuff uh, the fact that we were able to go in there and fix that uh, just makes me happy. I, I love simplifying code. I read a great essay today, and I apologize to the person who wrote it because I don't remember. I don't remember who wrote that, but they had this great statement, which is that when we're talking about simple design and agile software development, we're not talking about doing simple things. We are talking about creating a beautiful and simple result. So. That's really, I, I think that's the core of it. And you know what? I've never thought of saying that before. It's always been implicit in my head. Do the simplest thing that could possibly work is about creating a simple, elegant solution as if that was the only thing you had ever planned on programming from the very beginning. And many of the problems that I see in the way people approach Agile design is that they don't do that. They, um, they do the simplest thing that can... They, they, they hack, they, honestly, they hack. They say, what's the simplest code I can write to get me from where I am now to where I want to be? Uh, and you do that enough, and it just accumulates a giant mess. Now, I've been doing this, I think this is going to be, what, my 100th and 110th episode? So I, I've been working on this code long enough that you can see that I don't always do things perfectly. And that is reality. You know, you just... When you're programming, some days you have energy for doing great work, some days you just want to get it done and go home. And pair programming helps re reduce that. Energized work, another important concept, uh, also helps reduce that, but doesn't get rid of it. So um, what's, what happens is that as you're working, you do accumulate little problems, and you've seen that happen in this code. Little problems accumulate. And you have to be okay with that, but you also have to have this, because that's going to happen, no matter how good you are, you also have to have this mindset of, I always want to make the code a little bit better. Yes, the stuff I'm working on right now, I don't know how to make it great. It's a little screwy, but whenever you see an opportunity, you just make it a little bit better. So um, I think I'm going to end up wasting my entire time talking about this, so I'm going to move on. But I, I just want to say that doing stuff like going in to whatever it was, uh, application frame, I think, and cleaning it up so it didn't have that big, ugly mess of document change listener stuff. That's what you have to do. That, that level of just being aware of how the design is working and where the iffy spots are and, and paying attention to that and fixing them when you see the opportunity, that's really important. So with that said, <laughs> I have some things that I'm not going to fix right now. So here I am being a total hypocrite, total, absolute hypocrite. Um, I have this to do, which is to decouple this code from the specifics of the colors used by the domain class. And um, I don't think I'm going to fix that because one, I'm not sure how. And two, this is a case where I'm looking at it, I, I I don't know how. So that that's actually the thing, though. It's... It's okay to not know how to make the design better. If you're at all honest with yourself, that's going to happen. And if you're not honest with yourself, well, it's going to happen anyway. You just won't admit it. There will always be things where the design isn't great and you don't know how to make it better. Um, or you think you could possibly figure out how to make it better if you spend a lot of time thinking about it, but it's not really causing a lot of problems. In that case, it's okay. Let it, let it go. You know, you'll come back to it. And as long as you, because you always learn as you're going, as long as when you come back to it uh, and you have that aha, aha insight, you actually follow up on it, that's what matters. 
follow up on your insights when you do see a way to make the design better, make it better. So, uh, all right, I, I got to actually do something interesting now. So thank you for listening to me. Um, we are going to move on. One thing I do want to do, uh, I realized there was a, a suggestion by, by um, Mikhail, uh, I, I believe, in, in the blog to take care of the not a number problem in, in dollars. And I said, oh, it doesn't matter if we take care of it where he suggested we need to take care of it when we parse the string. I think that was incorrect. Actually, if we pass in and not a number into valid dollars here, we really need to return, um, or specifically here, um, we really need to return an invalid amount. So I'm going to do that real quick. Um, so this is an example of where I know how to solve the problem, so I'm not going to be lazy about it. Uh, do, do. Let's, and it's gonna be super easy. So let's just do that. Uh, cannot construct dollars. Actually, rather let's make that part of this test here. Not rather than saying cannot construct dollars in last max range. Let's just say outside valid range. So we've got overflow, underflow, um, not a number. Is that legal? Huh. Well, let's see. Not a number is like one divided by zero, right? Um, let's take a look real quick. I'm curious. What are all the screwy things that you can have happen with a double? Um, my triple E double values. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, infinity. Oh, and not a number is the same thing. Um, okay. Uh, I always hate doing research on the video because it's so boring to watch. So I'm going to take a guess and say that I only have to worry about not a number. And if I'm wrong, um, hopefully somebody will let me know in the comments. Okay. So hopefully this will fail. Fingers crossed. I don't know if no, dividing by zero is not going to do it. How do you create not a number? Um, hmm. Well, I guess the simplest way would be to do a double dot parse double. Yeah, expected it to be perfect. Okay, so now we can just go into valid dollars. And um, Mikhail had a, a very sensible suggestion of rather than saying out of range, let's just say in range. So let's see how often we use that. Actually, before I refactor, um, what we sh what I'm going to do is. Whoa. That's not what I wanted. Oh, that's how you get a, it's a constant, it looks like. So we'll just say not is a number for, so hopefully that will make it pass. Now why is my TD Gachi a zombie already? Do not understand. Um, okay, let's compile this. Did I take too long? Wow, minus 10. Um, yikes. Okay, not only that, I did this wrong. Return. Oh double if it's not a number it's out of range or if it's greater blah 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 okay so let's let's run this okay so there we go 
Um, okay, now let's simplify this a little bit. I can just ask for a not a number, I believe. That should still pass. Seems like my compile button isn't working very easily. All right. Um, and now we can refactor this to say in range. But real quick, I want to just see if there's anybody else using that. Nope. So I can refactor this to be in range. Um, and flip it around. I'll come back to that and make it a little bit. cleaner. Uh, there we are. And like I said, Mikhail's suggestion of just saying it needs to be inside the values was very sensible. Okay, hopefully I did that logic right. There we go. And now let's go back up here and uh, Flip the meat, the case of this. All right, there we go. So another little thing taken off the list. I'm going to take this one out. I don't think I care about it right now. Uh, the next thing up is. Since we've got things working pretty well with the actual application, um, I think it's time that we move forward on features. We spent a lot of time and effort on this one little field that I feel like we've gotten it really robust. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed on this one, I'm hoping what this means is that when we finally do get this field done, we'll be able to accelerate quickly and get the other fields in. Now, there's the argument that could be made that in order to have a walking skeleton, um, I shouldn't be focusing so much on quality, uh, that I should just get the bare minimums in and not have, for example, this instantaneous stuff. Um, that's a reasonable argument. Um, however, I'm, I'm not following that here. The, the trick, what you have to be really careful about is if you leave out stuff, you want to, not only do you want to get the walking skeleton, you want things to be done done. And there is a big, a huge balancing act between doing things in thin vertical slices and also being done. Um, obviously, I'm not done, I, even when I get all the fields in, I'm not done with the application. But I don't want to have to come back to this field and, you know, continually rework it. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a balancing act. It's not something that I can really provide a heuristic for. Uh, suffice it to say that what I'm not doing is I'm not putting in something like a tooltip saying exactly, well, exactly why this is invalid. I'm just saying it's invalid dollar amount. That's a case where I've, I've said this is good enough. So, but at the same time, having it just say dollar question, 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 that's not something shippable. That's not something that I could send out to the market. And so it made sense to me anyway to solve that problem while I was in here. I am solving a lot of fundamental technology problems, but I'm trying to do it in a way that is building out a very thin piece of functionality rather than a lot of breadth. Um, apologize if that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's hard to describe. And uh, I'm afraid I've wasted this, well, I've spent, anyway, I've spent your time talking about a lot of theory and just doing a tiny bit of work, but I am afraid that that is all the time we have for today. So thanks very much for watching. I promise next episode we'll get into a lot more meat. So thanks again. I will see you next time.